In this week's Pittsburgh History Today, we're talking about boating on the Three Rivers. Lately, the floating tiki bar has been making news for taking people up and down the river while enjoying a drink or two. And, of course, there's the party-powered pedal boat where you can bike your way along the river with friends while also enjoying a drink or two. Are you seeing a theme here? <laughs> of course, there's also the Gateway Clipper Fleet Cruises, or maybe you're lucky enough to have your own boat or jet ski. But long before all these boats made the Pittsburgh scene, a common sight during the summertime were steamboats. That's because more than 150 years ago, Pittsburgh was the steamboat building capital of the world. Heinz History Center President and CEO Andy Masick is here to tell us about that exciting time in our past. I, I had no idea. I feel like every time you're here, I learn something new about well, our past. If you had been here in the 1850s, you would have seen a mile of steamboats on the Mon Wharf. You could actually walk a mile from boat to boat, just <laughs> jumping from boat to boat. They were packed in there so tightly. And the first steamboats on the western waters were constructed by Robert Fulton in 1811. And they built the New Orleans, was the name of the boat. And the amazing thing was that it could steam all the way down to New Orleans and then back. Think about that. Before steamboating, you'd have to take a boat down river and then dismantle it because there's no way you could get it back, back up. up the river with paddles or sails or anything. Steamboating changed the way America transported goods and people into the West. And so there's a boat in particular called the Arabia, is that right? The steamboat Arabia was laid down in Brownsville. 1853 and then the engines were fitted in Pittsburgh and then it was packed with a million objects and steamed down the Ohio up the Mississippi and then up the Missouri River where it hit a snag a sunken tree and it sank in 30 minutes total loss oh. and all oh, the owners went out of business and 150 years later, some guys figured out where the boat was. It was 45 feet under a cornfield in Kansas City. The river had meandered around the wreck and left the boat in the water table. That. These farmers put 20 pumps, high capacity, 20,000 gallons a minute pumps all around the wreck. They lowered the water table, excavated the boat, and on it, they found a treasure trove, a time capsule of Pittsburgh history when Pittsburgh was the gateway to the West. Coats, shoes, yeah. boots. You said this was like the target back then on a steamboat. <laughs> you know, it was. It had everything. It even had pickles still green in the jars. Wow. And they were edible. Did you eat one? One of the diggers popped the cork <laughs> out, reached in, and ate one of the pickles that's, and didn't die. That's see. That's we good. count that as edible. I would say so, <laughs> although the FDA may not approve. I, I wouldn't do it. Okay. But, but if you come to the History Center today, you can see some of those things uh, and, and their perfect state of preservation. And that was because they were in an anaerobic environment. Down in the water table, in the silt, for 150 years, there's no oxygen down there, so nothing rusted or corroded. Look how perfect. They're in perfect condition. Yeah. Boots. All those shoes. You know how things get in the uh, freezer when you leave them there too long? They yeah. get freeze dried. Yeah. They get uh, uh, freezer, freezer burned. Burn. Right. right. Well, that's what they had to do with all this stuff. Because it was all soggy and sodden, they put it in giant freezers, and the freezers suck the moisture out of it but leave the organic material intact. So right. wood and leather and cloth, the hats are still wearable. The, the coats are perfect. Uh, so this really was a treasure trove of, of history, a time capsule. Well, while you're here, Andy, you guys have something really cool coming up at the Heinz History Center, and including seeing this great exhibit, you can also see something else. Well, this weekend on Saturday, you can he see Heroes and Sheroes. It's all the costumes designed by Ruth Carter for films like uh, Selma and Roots and Black, Black Panther. Panther. You, you can so see the cool. costumes from Black Panther. And then, of course, if you stick around uh, at the end of uh, September, you'll see the Apollo 11 capsule come to Pittsburgh. First time since 1969 that it's, it's left. left the Smithsonian Institution. I think it's so neat. You guys are doing big things. Thank you so much, Andy. Thanks. And keep watching for more Pittsburgh history today here on PTL when Heinz History Center President and CEO Andy Masick joins us as a regular guest. And, of course, visit the History Center. You're going to want to check it out, especially this weekend on Smallman Street in the Strip District.